So we got the second book of the awesome series, Keeper of the Lost Cities. Hello fellow plot questers, it is I earned the plot quester, and today I got the second book in the Keeper of the Lost Series series, Exile. Well, let's get right on to it. So last time, um, yeah, uh, Sophie and Dex got kidnapped and they got rescued and that's pretty much where we ended it off. This time, things are supposed to get better. However, they really haven't and Sophie has a bodyguard now because the council is pretty paranoid that she will be, you know, captured or kidnapped again. Then, she finds an alicorn or a unicorn with wings. And there's only one alicorn inside the sanctuary which is where every single species lives inside and basically the elves believe that each and every creature in the world has the right to live and they have a special purpose and if any of them go extinct that would be a tragedy to the world and would that or would uh, affect the fragile balance the world is therefore they had been trying to find a female alicorn for a very long time since they already possess a male alicorn within the sanctuary this also meant that the uh, that the elves were extremely delighted when she found Sylvanie, the female alicorn. And Sophie, again, discovers a new power. The fact that she can actually look into the minds of, al of animals and communicate with them as well. Which is a pretty cool power, if you ask me. Add it onto the list for Sophie, Fos Sophie Foster. Meanwhile, the elven society is in chaos and uncertainty. After all, that society has never, ever, ever, ever experienced any kind of rebellion within its ranks, and therefore the world is in confusion. Because the elves, they don't even have a police force, because no one really ever got kidnapped, or no one ever really stole. No elves, every elf was equal, every elf was given an equal amount of money, because that wasn't a necessity, all they wanted to was all they wanted was to live, to live in large houses, and have fun and look good. There was really nothing about. It was just a fair society, and or or so they justified. And there's nothing really bad going on. However, now since Sophie Foster's been kidnapped and she's being called the girl who was taken, everybody's super paranoid that being around Sophie would bring disaster upon them and the Elven Society is in chaos because imagine, if you lived in a world where nothing bad ever happened and then suddenly this weird kid comes in and the bad stuff starts happening, you might start blaming the weird kid. You might. By might, I mean you probably would. Of course, as the readers, we feel as if this is unjustified, however, if we think about this in the perspective of the other elves, then it actually pretty much is. I think I would actually blame the girl kid, as well, uh, Sophie, as well, because I'm pretty freaked out. Then Alden says that she and uh, that the council has ordered them to do a mind break on Fenton, the pyrokinetic that currently, that used to be on the council, However, no, is no longer on the council. Because you see, one of Sophie's captives was a pyrokinetic, a banned talent within the Elven society that isn't really taught anymore. Therefore, the only pyrokinetic that exists now after the ban on pyrokinetics. And therefore, Fenton must have done something with it because he's literally the only pyrokinetic. Therefore, he's the only one who can teach a person or an elf with that talent, a pyrokinetic talent, to use their ability. And Sophie had been tortured by that particular pyrokinetic, therefore Fenton was being was being interrogated. However, he wasn't submitting, and therefore finally the elves decided to do what is called a mind break, which is to break a per well in the elves' mind in order to find the memories within. So Alden and Sophie together goes in. Because one person is going inside the person's mind, or one elf, whatever, and the other elf has to be the guide, or sort of like the backup. If the elf that is going within the mind to break the mind gets trapped within the mind, then it is the guide's job to be the safety rope to pull them back up. And Sophie is being given that role. Of course, she doesn't really want to do it because she's still inexperienced, she's still a kid, and it freaks every- all of this freaks her out to extreme levels. However, she agrees to it with Alden persuading her and finally does it. However, things go very, very long. Fenton breaks his own memories. 
and makes Sophie and Alden lose concentration and destroys his own memories, like a failsafe almost. And then, Alden's mind seems to be really, really damaged. And he goes into a moment of stasis before Sophie manages to bring him back. Then, on graduation day, Alden collapses, and she shows the symptoms of an elf who has mind break. As in elves whose mind has gone completely cuckoo, and now she seems to be in really, really bad condition. Meanwhile, something seems to be wrong with Sophie, because her impregnable mind was no longer very impregnable. And P and um, Fitz had found a way to talk to her without her lowering her guard. And things were really bad. And Bront, you know, the counselor for inflicting, had been teaching Sophie how to inflict. And his inflictions are actually working on Sophie. And they aren't supposed to because Sophie's mind has an impregnable barrier. And that's supposed to be, you know, impregnable. And that's not working out. So, in other words, everything is being freaky freaky. And when... Our dear Erwin, or the guy, the healer guy, points a light into Sophie's eyes, it almost seems to bore into her brain. And something is definitely wrong with her right now. Then finally, the Black Swan contacts her and says, we can fix you. And when that happens, Sophie, Sophie's like, okay, this is my only chance. They designed me, maybe they can fix me because I seem to be, you know, malfunctioning, whatever that means. And if they fix me, then maybe I can fix Alton's mind as well. And then finally, after a perilous adventure, Sophie gets fixed. And then finally, he, she goes to Alden, fixes Alden's mind. By the way, when she, you know, went to the Black Swan, they got attacked. Like, duh. <laughs> Why did I expect that? And then, Sophie fixes Alden's mind, and things are all hunky dorky again, and it's a happy ending. Now that is pretty much the plot for this book, so my opinion, again, major Harry Potter vibes or uh, parallels that I can make because, you know, Sophie keeps getting into trouble and her abilities are manifesting and and she's finding, like, really these, uh, she's, like, discovering new things and it really reminds me of Harry Potter in a lot of ways, like, that sense of wonder, that magic school, her going on, like, illegal adventures and breaking the law to do the right thing and i think that's really really well written and i just i couldn't let the book go man I, it was like 12 p.m and i was just like read must finish yeah you get the point and i was just reading through it it was such a great read and it was such a thrill of a ride and the next book i'm really really excited to review about because i already read it and it's called Everblaze, and I'm really ready to to do that as well, because that was, that was a great book. However, all in all, this book was really, really good. Reminds me majorly of Harry Potter or Percy Jackson, that kind of wondrous, pull-you-in sort of fantasy book. And I'm super excited for the next one. And it is such a great book, and I highly recommend it to you guys to read. It's really nice. It really brings you in, brings you back to that Harry Potter kind of vibe. Actually... My assessment of this book, I, I know I mentioned Harry Potter a lot, but specifically I would say like a modernized version of Harry Potter kind of thing, you know? I don't know. And a lot of the factors like, you know, magic and magic school and all kinds of ridiculous but really good tasting food and all sorts of magical creatures sort of reminds me of Harry Potter. But again, these are all just success criteria and... You know, I don't blame the author for using them because she might not have been even, he or she, or they, they, might not even have been thinking about Harry Potter when she wrote, when, he, when they wrote the book. So, yeah. And I'm just saying that some of it reminds me of it and that's a good thing because it, that's just showing how well written it is and how compelling it is. Anyways, like always, your plot quester and the plot quester, such a great book. Again and again, I'm saying this, highly recommended and like always, good. Thank you.